Good morning. Welcome to class 9 ICSC Physics. We are still on chapter 1 measurement and experimentation and this is the third video of that. We are now going to talk about the measurement of time. Now when we talk about time, remember there is a simple pendulum. You have already learned that in theory and we know the formula for the time period. Time period is equal to 2 pi into under root L upon G. So you will see that therefore you will see that time period is directly proportional to the root of length of the pendulum and also the time period is inversely proportional to the root of gravitational acceleration. This you should be able to understand looking at the formula. Now let us look at the question. The first question that we have is how is the time period of a simple pendulum affected if at all if the length is made 9 times. Now whenever we have something like this we would make L1 and L2 as the columns. So if L1 is L then L2 is going to become 9L. And your G is remaining the same, so your G1 is the same as G and G2 also is the same as G. So you will see that what the time period varies with is length and G. So G is not talked about which means gravitational acceleration is constant. Now if we take T1 upon T2, T1 being the original time and T2 will be the change time, the second case. And that will be equal to, if it is directly proportional to root of L, it is going to be under root L1 upon under root L2. G is not affected at all, so we do not take that into consideration, which is equal to under root your L1 upon L2. So, if you substitute the values, how much is the initial length? L. So, your L1 is L and your L2 is 9L. L, L gets cancelled and what you will get is under root 1 upon 9 which is equal to which is going to give us T1 upon T2 as 1 upon 3. So, now they are asking you how is the time period affected? So, T2 you have to find. T2 you cross multiply is going to become 3 times T1 and so your answer will be that the time period becomes 3 times the original. And this is this is your answer. So this is your answer one. Now let us look at the second part. The second part says if the acceleration due to gravity is made 1 upon 16. So again you will see that your G1 is going to be equal to G and your G2 is going to be equal to 1 16th of G and so you are going to take again T1 upon T2 because this is a comparison question how is the time period affected means how the time is going to change so now T1 upon T2 you can see time period is inversely proportional to root of G and so T1 upon T2 is going to be equal to G2 upon G1 it won't be G1 upon G2 but it will be G2 upon G1. Why? Because it is inversely proportional and of course we will write the root sign. And now we will substitute the value. What is your G2? We will write root of G2 is G upon 16 upon G1 is G. So that gives us under root G upon 16 multiplied by now you are dividing by G means multiplying by 1 upon G. So G and G get cancelled and you will get 1 upon 16 and root of that. 
and so you will get therefore t1 upon t2 is equal to 1 upon 4. So you want to find t2. t2 will cross multiply here. This will come here and it will become 4 times t1. So you will see that time period becomes 4 times. 4 times the original and that is your answer 2. Now let us come to the third part. The third part tells you the mass of the bob is doubled. Now look at your formula. T stands for time period, 2 pi is a constant and L and G. L is the length of the pendulum, G is the gravitational acceleration. Is there mass anywhere? No. So you will write your third part as time period remains the same since time period is unaffected by the mass of the pendulum and this is to be double underlined because that is your answer 3. Now we come to the second question. We have two simple pendulums P and Q and they have lengths 1 meter and 16 meter respectively at a certain place. Now this certain place means gravitational acceleration is going to remain constant. Which pendulum will make more oscillations in one minute? Now when they talk about making more oscillations we are concerned with the number of oscillations. Now number of oscillations in one second is the frequency. So you have to now connect your answer with the, with the frequency. Now let us look at L1. Your L1 is 1 meter. Your L2 is 16 meter. Your G1 is going to be G and your G2 also is going to be G because it is the same place and at the same place gravitational acceleration will remain the same and as we have seen your time period is equal to 2 pi into root of L upon G therefore you will have T1 upon T2 equal to you will see that gravitational acceleration is the same 2 pi is again a constant gravitational acceleration also is constant so the time period is going to be directly proportional to root of length and so you will write under root L1 upon L2 and now we will write this as under root 1 meter which is the value of L1, 16 meter which is the value of value of L2 and meter meter will get cancelled and that will give you 1 upon 4. Your T2 sorry T2 is equal to T2 is equal to T1 into 4 which is 4 times T1. So you will see that now time period has become more. So frequency will become less. So let us now see how time period and frequency are related. Now time period is inversely proportional to the frequency. We have a formula that T is equal to 1 upon F. So you will have so you will have T1 upon T2 is going to be equal to F2 upon 
F1. And so, T1 upon T2 came out to be 1 upon 4. So, you will see that F2 upon F1, I'll rewrite that, F2 upon F1 will be 1 upon 4. And so, you will see that your F2 is going to be equal to F1 upon 4. So, you will see that the oscillations made by the second case, if the frequency is going to be lesser, the oscillations also are going to be lesser. So you will see that the oscillations, bridge pendulum will make more oscillations. Now frequency F2 is definitely less. So you will say therefore F1 is greater than F2 and you will also see from here implying that F1 is going to be 4 times F2. So you will see that the first pendulum now first pendulum is which one p so p pendulum p pendulum p makes more oscillations in fact pendulum p is going to make four times more So, four times the oscillations of Q and that is our answer. Now we come to the third question. A simple pendulum completes 50 oscillations. So, we have 50 oscillations in one minute. Now, oscillations are going to connect you with frequency. So, we know that the number of oscillations is equal to 50 and the time taken is 1 minute and that 1 minute means how many seconds 60 seconds now our frequency is number of oscillations in one second and so we are going to say that if 50 oscillations are in 60 seconds so how many oscillations will be in one second you can do this mentally also saying that frequency is going to be equal to number of oscillations upon the time taken so number of oscillations is 50 upon time taken is 60 and that is how we have number of oscillations and this is 60 seconds so when you have 5 upon 6 seconds you will write it as a decimal place so decimal by 0 point it will be 6 8 48 remain 2 then 6 3 is 18, remain 2 and it will be recurring. So 0 0.833 per second is also hertz. Remember hertz is per second. So your frequency is 0 0.833 seconds and that is your answer 1. Now when we come to the time period, the time period is inversely proportional to frequency. We have this formula already. So the second part will have 1 upon f. So now we will not take the point because decimal a number because it is a recurring decimal. So we will do the reciprocal of 5 upon 6. So it will be 1 upon 5 upon 6 which gives you 6 upon 5. And so the time period becomes 
1.2 second and that is our answer 2.